Hi everybody, welcome to the second section of the React Native course. In this section we will cover the basic theory of the React Native architecture. In this section we are going to take a look at the following topics. First of all, we will learn the high level React Native architecture. We will introduce how it's working with the latest JavaScript spec, ASNext. We will understand how is the React Native project environment. We will introduce the component model and we will explain why it's important. Also, we will learn how to debug our app using Google Chrome debugger tools. We will list the most important built-in functions and modules that are bundled inside React Native. We will learn how to read and search through Facebook's documentation of React and React Native. And finally, we will learn how to use Flow to add types to our JavaScript code, high-level React Native architecture. In this video, we will talk about the general architecture of React Native Framework and what is its role in building a mobile app. We are going to discuss three important topics. Are React Native apps hybrid or native apps? What's the architecture of the React Native Framework? What else do we need to build a mobile app? So, let's start with the first question. A React Native app is a native or an hybrid app? The answer is both. An hybrid app is a HTML, CSS, JS app that runs inside the web view. Basically, your app becomes a browser with a bundled website that runs inside that web view. The opposite of an hybrid app is a native app, which uses the platform language and tools provided either by Apple, Google, or the operating system. React Native sits in the middle of both. You write all the app and business logic in JavaScript. But that JavaScript is sent through the bridge to the native runtime that transforms your JavaScript into native views and components. So, how React Native works under the hood? There are four important pieces in the React Native architecture. The JavaScript code you will mostly write, the bridge, the JavaScript core and React Native, and then the platform code. There are more pieces into the architecture of what's an actual React Native app, such as the Yoga library for layout, the shadow tree, etc. But for understanding the overall architecture, we can simplify the schema and talk about that four separate modules. The JavaScript app is, most of the time, your app and your business logic. You'll read your app, mostly in pure JavaScript. The JavaScript can communicate with the native side through the bridge, which sends events from the JS side and to the JS side. JavaScript is an interpreted language, so a JavaScript core engine runs your app, not a web browser like hybrid apps. Now enter the React and React Native code, which transforms your React app into a tree of components to render, which, in the end, are represented by pure native views. Simplifying the model, we can say that here the communication to other native modules will occur. React Native is asynchronous, so you will not block the main thread. This means that, for example, layout calculation happens in another thread and therefore your app won't be blocked by it. In the bottom of the architecture, the framework uses the native platform SDK. In iOS, you will end having UI view subclasses in your view hierarchy, and in Android, you will use fragments, for instance. OK, let's see what lies beyond React Native. React is a library to build user interfaces, so it is React Native. But what about the other parts of our app? What about the data fetching or the camera usage? React Native will be used to build the UI of our app. For example, in a classic MVC architecture, React will cover the view parts only. The other parts go beyond React Native scope, and there are a bunch of libraries and strategies to build or app on. React Native does include a little bit more than just the UI. It bundles the access to frequent device APIs, such as the geolocation or the networking. Those features are bridged to the JavaScript site, but they run pure native code on the device. You will be using NS URL session in an iOS app. But in the JavaScript site, you will write your network requests as the fetch spec dictates. 
The same can be applied to geolocation API. On the JS side, all the React Native components are React components. So you will find all the lifecycle methods and features of a React component available. Props, state, lifecycle events, and the most important one, the render event that draws each one of our components. If we're building a large or medium app, we will find that it's going to be nice to have a state management library. We can do that with component state, but it will be more complex as the app grows. As we said before, there are some APIs that are included in React Native, but there are some other very important that not. Two of the most important ones are app navigation and global state management. The navigation is fundamental to any mobile app that consists about more than one screen. So in future sections, we'll cover different options for a multi-platform navigation. In this video, we saw that React Native apps are in between hybrid and native apps, the basic architecture of React Native framework, and that React Native is a framework for building UIs, and we can use other libraries to complement the framework.